call the meeting to order. We're here tonight with our goal of having a select board public meeting on revisions to the Callis Town Plan from 2016. And thank you, John and Jan, for coming so you can walk us through. Okay. So my understanding is this is pretty minor changes. Um, the first one being economic development. And the second one is the natural resources part two. And neither amendment alters the designation of any land area. So I know you guys have been working double duty and overtime, so thank you very much for doing that. Um, I, see, uh -oh. I see Rowan is on our Zoom call. Okay. Rowan, did you have any public comment? Um, no, I, I just been here in case anybody had any questions. I'm, I'm, you know, everyone in North Gallus is excited that, um, that Cal North Gallus might get designated as a, uh, a, a center. So yeah. there's and much enthusiasm in North Gallus. Yeah, and if North Gallus does de get, get designated, there are some opportunities for some funding sources through historic tax credits and things like that, correct? Exactly. There's actually quite a few opportunities um, state, through the state to, um, to get tax credits to fund various uh, community associated projects. So it's actually a big deal for Memorial Hall and possibly other future um, endeavors. Uh, but, but in order to apply for any of those tax credits, you can only do that if you're designated a village center. Yeah. Are you guys doing any work on the hall this winter? Or is it kind of stop for the weather? Yeah, not winter. It's just impossible. But we we actually just um, put out the bids for phase two, the rest of the construction process, which would start in May and finish in uh, August or September. So uh, yeah, like you know, fingers crossed, it'll all happen yeah, next summer. All in good time. Yeah. Uh, so hi, John. We were just getting started on the public hearing for the changes to the 2016 town plan talking about the economic development piece of it do you have any comments or questions for the planning commission on that piece of the plan i do not Mark, do you? i'm glad they're willing to keep working at it thank you yeah yeah they've been putting in a lot of time anything you want to update us on with respect to that piece of the town plan no no this is your Public hearing. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but I'm just asking you if you have anything you want to tell us about it. Really? Okay, natural resources section, interior forest blocks, and you were mentioning something, John, about that. Did you have anything you wanted to tell us about that? No, not really. It's information that was provided to us uh, from the uh, Conservation Commission with help from uh, Eric Sorensen. Um, I, I put together four maps showing the four different elements that are expected in a forest integrity section. That's data that came right from the state. I just sort of gave it different colored hatches to be applicable to whatever map you happen to be looking at. Um, and you're the map guy, so the map thank guy. you. He's the map guy, and um, he's put in an inordinate amount of time um, on the maps. Um, what we noticed is they're in the town plan. And when you go to the front of the town plan and you go through the index and they're at the bottom and they do click on there. I tested it. Yeah. <laughs> but we were noticing that at a public hearing we couldn't access them. And so I don't know. If there's questions about it, go to the town plan that's on the town website. Okay. And then um, scroll down and then you'll click on them and there are four, the four maps are there. The new ones, and we took out two old ones. Okay. Um, and did the Conservation Commission have any input? Absolutely. They, they were they were given an opportunity. Oh, at the Larry beginning, Bush, yes. Yeah. At the, oh, okay. So they so they they're Larry obviously. Bush was, has been instrumental along with Eric. Okay, great. Um, so is there's. Katie on right now. She is okay. Mm -hmm. She yells okay. Um. 
Yeah, I don't know if you want, does anybody want me to try to call up the maps? I don't know how, to, how we might make that happen here, but. Um, Rick? I, I don't know. If, the links don't Even if the maps were up, I'm not right. sure what, what we'd see. But you guys would provide that the Conservation Commission and Eric uh -oh. already have it. Oh, Katie's got them. Is that you, Katie? Yeah, she's. Yep. Jan, do you want to direct me to the page that you want them to look at? Go to the, um, go to the left. You, you, what you want to do is get into the public notice section. At, on the home page? Mm -hmm. On the home page. And then scroll down to the uh, town plan. <coughs> No, um, that's the public hearing. You need to go. Mm -hmm. I don't want that one. Because we found that it didn't open up. So we'll go down <clears throat> to the final draft 2021. Keep going down. There. Final draft. Okay, click on that. <coughs> Scroll down past the index. Oops. Now scroll back up. <laughs> okay, right there. Those four red maps connectivity block, mm -hmm. interior forest, riparian habitat, and, and each of those, if you click on that, a map should open. And the connectivity blocks, are they connecting? They're connecting pieces of land for wildlife. Basically, it's one big map the state put together, and it shows all the land in Calus, except subtracted from that are house sites, <coughs> and 100 meters around each house site, roads, and some ag fields. And what's left are these blocks, and each block is a certain acreage. The larger the piece of unbroken land is, the more important it is for natural resources. And some of these, if you have two large pieces abutting each other, then the connection between those two is more important, considered a higher priority connector than, than if you had two smaller blocks. It's the same set of blocks in every case, but they're used for sort of different purposes. Well, it's all wildlife, it's all habitat. Right. So here we have two different kinds of, of block, connectivity blocks, I guess. And it doesn't matter what kind of wildlife, it's just wildlife, right? Yeah. Well, wildlife will migrate from the migrate to the block. So I think you probably have a regular priority and highest priority, I think is what those two greens are. Yeah, the little green with the little yeah. dots or whatever is highest. Yeah. And the other green, priority connect. So what's the difference between, tell me again, the difference between Good highest question. and priority? Good question. You have to ask the state and yeah, Eric Sorensen, mm -hmm. but I guess they, they couldn't think of a creative name and could give both of them, so they, they're both priority, but one's a higher priority. And well, I think the ultimate thing would be any future planning commission um, in terms of doing anything new for um, New bylaws would would want to uh, work work about either where development would be or high uh, yeah. density averaging yeah. only in those in those certain areas mm -hmm. so that the connectivity paths would remain right if there is going to be development but that's for another bylaw issue that's going to come later okay it's right now the names are, are just placeholders to, and they're, what they're doing is they're describing adjacencies of tracts of land. And if you have bigger tracts of land adjacent to a bigger tract, it's in the darker green. Mm -hmm. And and where, where the town is densely settled and, and the blocks get too small to have any value for habitat, then it's white. So that's what that is. Yeah, so we've like annihilated a bunch of habitat. Well, yeah, it goes back 
over 100 years. Yeah. So we've been, we've yeah. It's actually recovering from uh, most of it, many years. The highest priorities, as I understand it, uh, usually maps, you know, align with the size of the forest of the area, but also the, uh, the type of species that inhabit it and their level of sensitivity and mm -hmm. risk and all that. And so with this connectivity on this too, then it isn't just that it's only. I'm guessing A and R. Are there any permits that would have to be? Associated with development, or there, did it, would get denied? You know, in the state. Yeah, or it's not permit only at 250. Or only at 250. Yeah, only at 250. There's a discussion at the legislature about it, but nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. So it's local zoning and Act 250 that are really this is in the hands of, and Act 250 only covers like mm -hmm. less than 40 percent of the development in Vermont. So sure. Right. That's why the planning extra effort in hopes that local zoning we can try to mitigate against <laughs> development in those most sensitive areas. Yeah. And in particular, protecting those connecting corridors, because if you break those connectors, yeah, you, you have isolated them. blocks. <coughs> and this so, mapping is across Vermont, but it also goes across Maine, New Hampshire, Maine, up into the Maritimes. They're, they're trying to maintain the connections up through. Right, because they're- that the all the way across. Yeah, because the wildlife needs that. They need yeah. that, and with climate change, species are migrating north, the ones that are more cold climate yeah. adapted. Um, a lot going on. So, Katie, can you go back and let's maybe look at the next map quickly? <clears throat> Interior forest block. I say it's, it's basically the same map, mm -hmm. but the the blobs that are hatch are specific to what they what they are there. Yeah, no, I can't do it. It's been too long since I've done it. Because all those blue lines are lakes, are streams and rivers, right? Yep, and they each have their own buffers. When you get to riparian habitat, mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of buffers. Yeah. We don't have very much development space. Okay, you want to go to the next map, Katie? Sure. Riparian habitat. Wow. So the blue. What's the blue with the little dots? That's well, the riparian you habitat. You can see a hatch, but there's the water, the streams and lakes that you've seen on other maps, only many of them now have buffers. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so this is all riparian habitat. And like you say, it's a very wet town. Yeah. And there's a lot of purple riparian critter crossings. I love that. <laughs> Turtles, John. I've, yeah, I've, that an amphibian so sure. I, I found a layer at the state for am, potential amphibian crossing. So I've got the frogs have their own mm -hmm. green hatch for the frog crossings. Wow. Yeah, there was a time this summer when I was walking the dogs that like every there was one place on Bank Molly Road that I would walk, yeah. and I would see those um, pink. Salamander things? Oh, yeah. No, for Newts. Newts crossing the road. A lot of them got squished, yeah. unfortunately. I rescued a couple, but I don't know if they survived. Amphibian road crossing potential. That's, that's a layer I got from the state. It wasn't something that Eric specifically asked for, but it seemed appropriate to put it here. Mm -hmm. We can do with it what we want, but it's data from the state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
state, does the state offer any kind of designs for passage for these riparian? I've only heard of one, one example where in Milton, I think, someone built some kind of culvert specifically yes, for they did. They yes. got a hundred thousand dollars. I heard I heard about that. That's really right. cool. Yes. There was a massive. So if anybody wants to write a grant for a hundred thousand dollars to do that kind of thing, you're all welcome to do it. Big old culvert. It was um, a culvert uh, that they did because they had a massive crossing area over there. Right? Between, either Moncton or Hinesburg, I can't remember. Yeah, I remember hearing Hinesburg. about that. It's a pretty cool yeah, project. I've never seen it. And then, and then the red lines are wildlife roads. There's not very many of those, John. Can you tell me, like, I get I get lost? Where, where are we? Purple is, is the critter crossings. Okay, so, but first I have to get my bearings. Where is... I think I can. Now, I think I see now, number ten pond, but can you point to number ten pond, for instance? In some of these PDFs, you can you can open and close layers. I don't know. I don't know if we can do it on these. But I just wanted John to point to, on the map to like number. This is number ten. That's number ten. Okay. And Curtis this pond. Is over, this is Curtis. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of. Adamant is down here. Right. It's, it's, it's so a lot of the that's soda. so a lot of the red lines are also near a lot of water, right? Yeah. Well, what what is red? The next one. If, if you can, can you scroll up a little bit? Um, Katie, can you scroll Katie, up? Scroll down. Uh, wildlife yeah. road. Wildlife road crossing. The red is the wildlife. The road. pink is the riparian. So it's interesting, the wildlife road crossing stuff, that's pretty cool. They've recorded that. I know Susan Morris was doing a lot of uh, recording animal movements along road corridors. Yeah. They did it. Huh. So they report. We've been doing that for quite a while. Keeping track. Yeah, that's yeah, really interesting. I went out with her so I mean, that was doing Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's really helpful. Okay, next map. That's pretty cool. I like that wildlife road crossing stuff. <laughs> oh, this is, right, this is new. Oh, this is I'm, new. Really, I'm not the person to explain. Oh my gosh. It has as much to do with geological yeah. things which contribute to the ecology of an area as it does it's, plants and animals. Is it the sand level and the, the, the stuff that goes underneath it? Well, and calcium rich bedrock <coughs> is what well, comes through here and that supports, I guess it makes the water in the bends and swamps sweeter mm -hmm. and so it supports uh, So this is stuff that's underground? Yes, yeah. it's yeah. underground and, and it's... And what is it again? Calcium? Calcium rich bedrock. This is physical landscape diversity. But it mostly has to do with geology. Yeah, it's a calcium-rich bedrock. It's the basis for chickering bog. Yep. It's so, I mean, yeah, I mean look at the chickering bog. Yeah, and so, um, according to Eric, very few town plants have this. It's kind of a new thing, physical landscape. And when we looked out at other town plants, when we were doing this amendment, we saw that there was only one other town that had anything like it. So huh. it's like we decided to put it in in the future. Huh. That's, that's very interesting. And wasn't it, John, wasn't it over in the, John Bravant, wasn't it over in the McCullough pit there was a really sensitive bog? Yeah, it's a fen. A fen, yeah. Okay. So that's it, those are the four maps. Well done, well done. And then there's well, the fen's actually different than this are acidic and they also are typified by all of water in them enters but never exits so it's like a sinkhole almost and it, it, it's, it's acidic and supports life that enjoy that kind of habitat so yeah it's unique particularly in cows all right so Anybody want to look at anything else on this? There's, there's the written stuff that goes with it, but really right. that, that came right from the Conservation Commission, and, and we mostly looked at it for syntax and spelling errors and mm -hmm. 
We figured they knew more than we did. <laughs> I just gotta say this overall, I am blown away by this planning commission and what they've been getting done over the last six, seven, eight years. It's just Wait until you're you amazing. See. Yeah, Wait until you, you see the bylaw change. Yeah. Oh that's when you, you guys must be pulling your hair out. Well not yet. <laughs> Just chills up in my back. I feel so good about it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. All right, is there anything else for the public hearing for this? If not, no public. Well, there is. Yeah. There's Rowan. There's yeah, Bill. This is your yeah, but there's Bill Powell. There's Rowan. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wilson's on there. So. Do you know what, what is the next step? It goes to... Okay, if you write in your approval, and you vote to approve this, yeah. it goes to Central Vermont Regional Planning. Okay. It goes then to a municipal uh, review. And then once they approve it, and I, I don't know if you got that into Bonnie, because the next municipal review is in February. Okay. And at that point, when they approve it, then it's final, it goes to the state, and then <coughs> North Callis has, then we have to apply after that. We have to send all the documentation for the designated village center to Richard Amore in the state, at which point um, it goes to that board. And after they approve that, then North Callis would have their designated village center and Adamant would have their new boundary. Mm -hmm. So those two are going in. But we cannot do that paperwork until after the regional planning does their approval. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would make a motion that we approve the changes to. Do we close the hearing first. Or? I think we have to make. We should make it in the hearing, don't we? Oh, okay. That, I make a motion to approve and put forth. The changes to the Callis Town 2016 Town Plan. I'll second that. Okay. Any comments? Questions? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that closes the public hearing at 6:55. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can watch Jeopardy. I can. Hmm.